I'm glad it's night, so the light from the sun would not burn me on my bum when I shoot the moon. Hill's got it, driven into the ground with a pulverizing tackle from Ambrose. Oh, I think the Bombers are going to go over it here. Bombers have won. Welcome to the Windy Hill Windsock with me, The Solution, and joining me today is Fiona. Hey, Solution. How are you? Oh, look, I'm not going to lie. I've had a week. I, uh, I've had a week. And for once, you can't blame Essendon. Yeah. I, I can't imagine where I'd be if Essendon had a lost. Because honestly, watching that replay has has really been one of the main source of contentment and happiness this week for me. Things coming threes and just three big things. And when you've done the work on yourself, and if you're spiritually kind of sound, you kind of realise that all these things have happened for a reason, and mm. the reason's going to present to itself in some present itself to you in some way, shape, or form. But you also are conscious that that doesn't make it feel any better in this moment, and that really fucking sucks. But you're kind of spiritually sound, so you can't get too mad, kind of. So uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a rough, rough week. Um, but looking forward to talking some Essendon and some positivity, hopefully. Well, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Have you glanced at the ladder? I Have you done maths? <laughs> I have 100% gone through all the games for this weekend Fuck. and the seen who we need to lose, who we need to win, how we're going to get screwed. And I dare say, even if we win, I don't think we'll be able to get back into the eight. Yeah, this round. Yeah, I must admit, I I haven't looked closely. Like you, you haven't. I, I haven't pulled out the slide rule and tried to. You haven't been it. tempted, not even no, a bit. No, haven't. Haven't. No, no. I've, I've, I've noted where we are, mm -hmm. and I've noted, like I, I can't. I, I will barrack for Hawthorne to beat Carlton this week, of course, which I would have done anyway, to be honest. Even though I'm no lover of Hawthorne. No. But. There's a chance to say, oh, fuck, I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> if we win this week, we're definitely 50-50 to beat Sydney down here, given their woes. Definitely. And then we win that and suddenly, oh, fucking hell, I'm getting sucked in again. Look yeah. what one, one win can do. But you know what? I will say what this win did is it really proved that Brad Scott knows what he's talking about because we are infinitely better than we were last year. Because if you remember, the last five games of last year was total capitulation. There was no, there were, it was like, it was loss of life. There was barely a pulse. It was like beep, beep, beep. It was, it, we were, unhook the monitors. Like there was, yeah. it was downhill. It was downhill. We never would have beaten. Uh, people are talking about Frio making the premiership. Like we never would have beaten a top four top five side in the fourth round, last round, last year. So... But what shape was our list in last year? We, well, we, are you we saying had, we were decimated with injuries? We had injuries. No, we, we didn't. don't have any injuries now. We, never, we didn't have big injuries. Who did we have injuries to? Well, don't ask me. I can't remember. I just well, remember you can't remember. And, <laughs> and, 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 and then look, say we do, you don't know. Well, I didn't know. I know yeah, we didn't I, have. I don't think we had. Put it this way: I don't, I don't, I'm not arguing we're better than last year, even though we could. But win you this did game, say that. But we, lose this, ever... we could. We could win. This, we could have won last week's game and then lose the next three. I question Brad's definition of infinity. Is my issue with that statement? I just we, think that we. If, but I just think if we, even if we lose the next three, solution. I think when last year we wouldn't have beaten a Freo in round 21 is what i'm saying okay. Okay. um so already for me it instilled it, it, it re kind of reinstilled yeah. that yeah reaffirmed that hope that had kind of dissipated after the adelaide not so much the um the st kilda but after the adelaide it kind of reaffirmed a bit of the hope all right so we, you're sucked in, yeah. and I'm about to be sucked in again. 
I uh, think in about 40 minutes time, I think you're going to be all the way there. Uh, God. Well, sorry. let's go to the ch ch, ch changes. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> no, I bet you're not. Uh, so, out. Desma, as we, we knew. That's a big loss, actually. Mm -hmm. Very uh, exciting. In, finally, is Ben Hobbs. And milestone game is actually my boy, Harry Jones. Oh. 50 games. And I do reckon the last um, 10, 15 are certainly more impressive than the middle 20, 30. Yeah, let's uh, get them. So, yeah, he's, um, look, young key position players often take take time, but he's come along well this year, but that's not, I guess, um, what we're here to talk about. Can I just go straight to a couple of Houdinis? <laughs> yeah, sure. Fucking... Uh, Laverd, Laverdi, maybe. Jeez. I mean, t tell me about the Gold Coast forward line because I don't know hardly any of them. Are they? Are there structural reasons why he's survived? Okay. Well, not this. I mean, possibly, but he's just a victim of Kane Baldwin. It is is only Kane Baldwin keeping him out. If Kane Baldwin was fit, yeah. If he hadn't done that injury at the start of the year or whenever he did it, there was no way Laverde would have played every game this or he's missed one, but every game this season. It's it's just it's just such a friggin' shame because he was he was on just such an upward trajectory, Baldur's. Um so it is very disappointing. But look look, Ben King is the standout, obviously, but ha but uh, Mackay gets him and he needs to he needs to you know, obviously we all know Tracy dominated him last week against Frio. Um, so he needs to step up this week mm. and he needs to be really, really attached. Attached. There was one play in the last quarter where Ben, uh, ben Mackay took front position and it was everything. It was everything. It got in Tracy's space. It it, uh, it, it disallowed him to, to leap, to stretch his arms. He needs to do that to Ben King this week. He needs to play mm. in front of him. Um, and not allow Ben, not afford him that space to make a little lead. Um, I don't, he's not a big jumper, you know, notoriously. So he's not gonna he's not gonna jump on your shoulders. Yep. Um, but other than that, they've got uh, you know their ruckman wits who kind of gets down there. Um, ben Long, who I think my king will my king will take care of. Uh, because Ben Long towed us up last time we played them six, eight weeks ago. We made him look like a fucking Brownlow medalist in that game. Um, mm. But uh, look, no, I just think Laverde survives because there's no one else, basically. But yeah, he's Houdini. Right. He, he was he was so far, and I'm glad Jez got that correct in the pod. He was it was so far the worst. He almost cost us the game. He literally almost cost us the game because he gave away a free, which put us. Uh, a draw. Yeah. Like, he yeah. literally almost cost us the game. I, I, I still reckon he was a little bit unlucky with that free. I, watch, reckon, I, I reckon the both guys were grabbing each other. Watch the replay one, two, 12 times. Um, okay. And uh, and I think it was there. They, don't, they, don't, they always give those ones to forwards. As soon as your arm's around, it doesn't matter if the forward's got a bloody handful of jumper. Poor old Peter Wright. I mean, he's probably thinking, why not? Never yeah, got yeah. any of those. No, that's true. Uh, but it was stupid of Laverne to put himself in that position. The umpire yeah. and a, an opportunity. Um, I think Menzies also, he's a second Houdini. Uh, I do feel a little bit bad because, like, I tweeted, I made a tweet about his contract, which I think that just went, went a little bit viral. I don't mean to pick on Menzies. He certainly wasn't the worst. No. It was close, but he... He was but... close to the worst, but he he isn't, he isn't the guy we should be pointing the finger at when we lose. But he did do some very, very big blunders going into 50. How many kicks did he butcher that were not hard? How many decisions did he butcher yeah. going inside 50? That weren't hard decisions. Um, no, you I, can, I, you've convinced me. I, I, don't, I don't feel bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> you even said you feel bad. That's that's not who are you and what have you done with the solution? Yeah, Thanks. Good <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, who else would you bring in, though, to fill his spot at this point? guelph has gone. Um, yeah, I mean, you could bring in the other Davy, but that's a bit of a risk. We're already pretty young. So, 
yeah, I don't know. But I he's reckon. lucky, yeah. Yeah, I, I reckon he, anyone would have been better. Any kind. He's, he's, oh, he's Heinke! Yeah. yeah, oh, fuck, I would have well preferred. How good is Nick Hine going into the Ford 50? He would have, he, he's got a very good um, success rate with his inside 50 kicks. Correct, correct. So that's the team. Any... Can I just say, how, mu how much better did we look, did Langford look? Playing high half forward. Oh my god! Yeah, like oh, you got to give it to Brad Scott because you got when it comes to your, your leaders and your senior players, you got to give them a chance to turn it around. But to move him to high half forward and to get him up the ground along the wing at many many points, even late in the last quarter, was the difference. He was getting up to the second centre bounces. He was getting up to the stoppages. And he was doing damage because he was dragging his opponent as well. And this week, knowing that Sam Collins absolutely destroyed him, had him for breakfast, put him in his back pocket the last mm. six weeks ago when we played him, eight weeks ago, whatever, that is going to disrupt Sam Collins because he's not going to want to follow him. So he's going to get lost on finding another opponent. If you if you keep – if you play uh, Langford high half forward again, it'll, it'll disrupt Sam Collins' flow. I think it's an absolute fucking must. And then um, Jake Stringer benefited as well. Look what happens when you lock Jake Stringer down in the forward 50 and Jake Gresham. He will stay yeah. in the forward 50 put. Last couple of weeks, he's been getting up on the wing and he's been getting mm. up to stoppages. He didn't do much of that. He was in the he was in the our forward 50. Yeah, and no, I made that point in relation to Jones on the wing. I, I want, we, we didn't have half forwards dragging defenders out and that's why... Uh, it's so congested down there. So I agree entirely. Uh, any word on the team other than than what we've spoken about? Um, you, who, who's going to be this sub? I hope Menzi. I really want Davey to, to play the game. I mean, he yeah. came on in the last quarter and he was a pest. He did exactly what a small forward sub, I guess, player should do. He just... He just harassed, yeah. got to contest to contest, just buzzed around, made it made it a bit more, put a bit more pressure on their disposal, and it was it, it helped. Mm. So I would I would hope Menzies the sub because the least you know the less we see of him the better as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Poor bloke. Uh, all right, uh, we're moving to the smoking Joe and the sitting Joe. Who did we say last week? I was trying to remember. I, I reverse mozzed Parish because I had him for the sitting, so that was great. He yeah, was well done. fantastic. He was consistent and clean, and he was one of the only senior players who didn't fudge up a kick into the forward 50. Yeah, very impressive. He was brilliant. Who did I say would smoke? I don't even remember. <sighs> did you say Langford? Mm. Was it Langford? I don't remember. Fuck. Might have been. Yeah, fuck it, I'll claim it, Langford. <laughs> okay, you can claim it. <laughs> no, I think. it might have been Jake Stringer, actually. No, yeah, one of our know. listeners are, are screaming at their uh, devices right now. Anyway, who cares? Uh, so you all got the smoking, Joe. Who are you going? I've got the smoking. Um, I am going to go... I think I think Nick Martin was absolutely brilliant last week. I think he was yeah. it was one of his best games of the year personally. I think he was very very few grubby kicks or disposals from him and he tidied up his work even if he did stuff up. Um so I'm going to give him the smoking joe. I think he's going to have an absolutely next level game. A smoking game. Mm. I don't think he's been on the end of either of these awards this year or maybe again my memory's shot but no you're right probably because he has he's had a level of consistency all the way through yeah the year. yeah good point yeah and also i think when we've been unhappy it's generally only been about where he is on the field not not particular to him but is it safe to say that maybe he's settled now into that position and he's 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 finally feels connected and, and in synergy with the role because he doesn't he, he has, there hasn't been as many kind of grubby 
disposal lately. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Mm. But but when he kicked those goals, was he was was he coming forward from half back or was yeah he, he was up the ground? Okay. No, yeah, no, he just gut run and taken himself forward, which I still think is 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 an instruction. I do still think I don't. I, I think that's a yeah instruction from the runner, kind of you know get forward mm. if he can, um, because you you pull that. I don't know. You pull that um, arrow or whatever that move when you when you need some punch, and we needed some punch when he kicked his first goal. Yeah, I just reckon like whatever whatever happened to result in him being in the forward line. He's so clinical with his mm. goal kicking on the run under pressure. Snap stuff that. You know, well, Gresham did it last week, but we haven't really had the we, – we've you know, bemoaned the fact we haven't had a small forward all year. And although he's not a, a typical small forward crumbing in front of the pack type, to have a guy like that who is just dangerous as soon as he gets a ball anywhere inside 50, I wish he was playing up on the wing um, or even half forward. Yeah, well, I mean, but the thing is when he does that is he loses his opponent on transition too. So he's basically, because he's his opponent's not going all the way down with him, he's gut running. And to be doing that in the last quarter after you've ran for a whole game on the MCG, like that's a like elite work rate from him. Elite, And it's when we needed it. He's not a front runner. Mm. He's certainly not a front runner. He, you know, just plays well when we're going ahead. He was up for the take it on his shoulders, you know, and he knew it too. Right. True. He knew it um, by his reaction. So to have that weapon, to have to have that person who has the ability to do that to change mm. the momentum in a game, I mean, it's it's a pretty good uh, card to have in your pack and pull it out. You know, when you need it. Oh, he's he's an absolute gem. It's and a weapon. For all, the, all the talk of Dodoro and his failings in recent weeks, months. Nah, fuck uh, Dodoro. <laughs> you gotta give him credit for that one. No, I don't. No, I don't. Because for that for that for that pick, he's gotten six hundred and fifty five thousand other ones wrong along his tenure and he's holding the club back now. He's holding the club at ransom and no no pl- no person is bigger than the club, but he believes he is and he needs to do if he loves this club, just like if you love a lover, set them free. If if you if you if he loves this club, he will have the decency to walk away because now he is holding them back. Okay. My point is Nick Martin's pretty good. <laughs> fucking fucking love him. Yep. And he's gonna smoke on Saturday. All right. Night. So I've decided on my sitting Joe. Okay. And I don't do this with any joy, but I do this based on kind of what I've seen from this player. And this this player is, you know, if he was a ride at Luna Park, he'd be, he'd fit right in because he's a roller coaster. And that's Sam Draper. Oh, fuck. Just ha- he's just been up and down, up and down. And we don't win that game without Sam Draper. No way. He yeah, right. was a star. He put himself in the right position. He took marks. He contested. And history says, and I hope it's a Moz that, that um, you know, doesn't come to fruition, but history says that when, once he does that, next – recent history says if he does that next round, he's shit. So he's my sitting Joe. Yeah, he was huge in the last quarter. Absolutely huge. He – he was in the right spots. He pushed hard. He worked. His work rate was up. His focus, more importantly, was up. He wasn't, you know, bulldozing his way into no man's land as mm. much as it's very entertaining to watch and it cr- just cracks me up. Yeah. Um, he, he was, yeah, you're right. We don't win it if he doesn't. We literally don't win it if he doesn't um, take that mark and take men- a, a, multiple marks um, in that last quarter. But unfortunately... I, I find it hard to commend him for one quarter. Like, I, he was okay for the rest of the game, but I find it hard to commend him knowing that 
if you've got that in you, why are you not doing that at this stage of your career week in and week out? If you saw the reaction, if anybody saw the reaction from Caldwell after the siren went, like a good minute or a good 30 seconds after the siren went, that's a player knowing how much of a fucking win he deserved because he has been, he has been. Explain it to someone that didn't see it. So like like a good, a good 30 seconds or maybe it was shorter than that, a good 10 seconds after the siren has gone. So when the siren goes, there's the immediate woo elation and fist pumps. A good 10 seconds after that, Corwell is just absolutely fist pumping, screaming, he's, he's, He's tensing himself. He's tensing and he's just, he's fist pumping to himself. Just a little celebration on his own. That is an individual who knows he's gut run himself into the ground for five weeks when everyone around him, bar maybe two or, two or three, have just been along for the ride and not mm. been pulling their weight. That is a player who, who knew what he deserved and got what he deserved. Now, Draper had the same focus in that last quarter and he celebrated the same way, but he showed it for a quarter. You can't, we can't be just commending that kind of performance and, and lauding him for that. Credit was due, sure, but you need to be backing that up this week. But here's what worries me about him, and it goes to the concern I've had with Sam Draper for mm. a couple of years now. Is his body capable? of playing four quarters, let alone a season, but four quarters of that sort of football. But is it, is it his body or his mind? Because Brian played most in the ruck. He played more forward. My mind's telling me no. But my I body think it, I think it's his mind. My body is telling me yes. Exactly. Uh, I, is uh, it his mind? I think it's his mind. Can he hold the concentration? The maturity I, of mind. He's definitely. Well, we've already acknowledged he's no Mensa Society member. We, we we acknowledge that, but I I don't know that his body can do it. And this is what worries me that that he's a thirty two year old. Um, he's thirty two year old, thirty two year, years old biologically, even though his birth age is a lot younger. So I hope I'm wrong. If it was a mind, it's something that could be fixed. <laughs> Maybe not. But... I mean, the good thing is with Brian is that he's obviously full of full of beans and young, so mm. you'd hope that he can take shoulder a lot of that ruck work um, and getting around the ground more, and and Draper can rest forward a lot more. So obviously, with Goldstein, you don't have that luxury because he's fifty six years old, so you don't you don't have that luxury to do that. Draper's got to take half and half. And maybe mm. it was the Brian inclusion that allowed Draper to have that last quarter. Maybe Brian taking and dominating the majority of the ruck. Now, I don't have those stats, but from my eye, Brian was in there m- most. Um, so maybe we got that last quarter because Draper was doing less for the first time this season. Yeah, potentially. Potentially that makes logical sense. I don't yeah, know. I, I, yeah, go. I was going to say... I, I thought Brian showed enough. I was going to ask you what you thought, but that's a different topic. Yeah, no, I think, let's, well, let's talk about the two, um, well, one debutant, one kind of newbie in Brian. Yeah, I think, I mean, he was he was elite in his tap work, in his ruck work. He had two hole-in-the-ball tackles, tick, tick, mm. fantastic. Uh, got a little bit caught ball watching a few times. Um, Sean Darcy lost him on transition a bit, but that's to be expected. You know, his first game back after, you know, many, many uh, AFL games in between kind of um, his last AFL game. So uh, he'll build, hopefully. And, mm. yeah, absolutely happy to see him him and, him and Draper. I, I, we didn't get a real look into his forward craft because he didn't really go down there. Um, if he can clunk a few more, if you, a few marks, I don't know that he took any or many. That would be great, but yeah, it was it was very good. I know you're a big rap for him. Yeah, I, I don't want to see like again, Goldie. Thank you for your service. Um, I don't want to see another like about to retire Ruckman come into the team next season and take a bulk of the additional ruck work. I'd rather invest in Brian and 
is there is there another youngish ruckman maybe that we want to bring in as a as backup or invest in what's that guy's name? Vigo. We've already got a Vigo or, in the, in the VFL. Yeah. And, and I don't know. Involved. Yeah, so so maybe we need somebody, but I, do. I don't I don't want to see I want to see Brian given opportunities over a guy who's going to retire soon next next season. I think Goldie's Goldie's played his part, but. Oh, if Enough. Goldie doesn't go on, we'll need to get another Ruckman in, whether that's um, in the preseason draft or the um, rookie draft, or because you can't you can't go in with a setup and then one goes down and you've got no backup because Vigo won't be ready, I don't think. So if if Goldie stays on, then he can play a few games in the VFL. He can coach. Maybe he can do more of a coach mm. on field coach. I'd be happy for him to do that, and if necessary, he can play a game here or there. Um, but not, I mean, not maybe not when Drake is injured, but not at the expense of Brian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Paul yeah. Goldie, sorry, Lira. Paul, Paul Goldie, I reckon he's aged this year, like, markedly through the season. I think Essendon has that effect on people. I mean, I, I, to, to be honest, I just reckon he's loving life. I reckon he's he's just loving being at another club and I think he's loving the, the thought of, you know, ending his career at his childhood club and and you know doing his dad proud and yeah i think he's loving life i think he'd love to stay on to be honest I'm but sure i also would. i don't think i also don't think he's bitter if he's not getting called oh no no i think, no. I think he'd not. be happy yeah. to see them flourish and to be there and have a part in their career you know and and it'd be it'd be you know irresponsible for us not to credit a bit of his work with brian and and draper as well because uh, you know a He's been spending a lot of time with them. I've been told. Okay, well that's mm. good to know. That's good mm. to know. And just on Roberts. Yeah, uh, just looked like he belonged, didn't he? He did. And does that mean that maybe Brad Scott knows a bit about what he's talking about when he says, "I bring, I want to bring these debut, these young kids in when they can excel and they can stay in the team." Because look what's happened with Caddy and Roberts. They're not pinging in and out of the team. They're coming in and they look like they fucking belong. They look like they are up for the – they are throwing themselves at the contest. They look like they're confident in their bodies, even though they're little babies. They're still both babies and have baby bodies, but they look like they are throwing themselves into the contest like they are men. Um, and oh, Katie, uh, Katie's a grown-ass man. But he, he doesn't have the body of one. He's got the mind of one. Oh no, I reckon he's got. I reckon he's pretty physical for his age. He's physical, but he's lanky. He's got stringy arms. Same with Roberts, but he I wasn't going got, in like he I, did. No, no, no. no he wasn't both shying were, away. Both, yeah, yeah. They, neither of them shy have, away. Yeah, they both have an Sorry. appetite for the contest. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, he. They looked like they belong, and so maybe it just made me think. Fuck yeah, Brad Scott knows what he's talking about because you know what, you know. As I said, I've said before, keeping Brian in the VFL, making him earn it to the absolute decimal point, that builds resi resilience. And if Sardis has it in him to stick it out, he will get his opportunity. And when he comes in, he will be the same as what Roberts is. Roberts has been in 20 rounds in the in the VFL, absolutely dominating, building resilience, building it. He looked confident. He was pointing at the umpire and pointing at teammates like like yep. this kid's been around for twenty games. You know, that's what you want from a kid a kid like him, you know? And uh yeah, I I think he'll get he's gonna get a very, very big role this week because Dersma's out and all of a sudden that wing spot is going to really need – he's going to – he's got some big shoes to fill. Where, where, where did Roberts play in the VFL? Uh, on the wing and a little – he started off at half back, but then he got pushed up on the wing. And the other thing is, like, he was still going in the last quarter. If Brad Scott brings him in at round 10 or round 12 yeah. when everyone's saying he's dominating, has he, be, has he built his tank enough? In the last quarter, he was still running. He was no, he still was... up at the contest. He was in the back line. He was in the forward line. He he laid a tackle. If he's doing that, if he's coming early, has he built that tank? I don't know. I was going to suggest that maybe he could go down the half back and allow Nick Martin the freedom to run on the wing. But yeah, but, uh, yeah. Because in my head, he was a half back. Um, it started I... off half half back. Mm. Yeah. But very very impressive. Very impressive. 
yeah, I was I was impressed. I think um I think he'll hold his own. And this is the thing, like we could do that, but I trust him. I trust him on that wing. So, the game. Seven thirty Saturday. How are you feeling? I'm confident. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> and here we go again. And here, here, here begins the whiplash again. Yeah. Ah, give me a relationship. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I'm confident. I think we should win, win by eight, mm, eight points. Look, I'd like to think that you know, not once this year have we been able as a football club or as supporters been able to sit back and just enjoy the football every game has been stressful every game has had ups and downs we haven't just mm -hmm. been able to sit sit at the game and feel be full of pride and celebrate the heroics no game not one game every supporter base has had a game where they've been able to enjoy and we have not we've had to wait till the sirens to get Pretty out much. Yeah. Till the last siren to get up, the, the ethnic edging has definitely <laughs> been true to its word. <laughs> it's true. So I'd love to think that it's a nice 30, 40 point win, but we absolutely cannot be the first club to give Gold Coast their first win away from home. I refuse. I refuse to allow our team to be in that position. So eight point win. Eight points. Well, not much. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you got? How, how's it going to happen? Is, is it going to be us giving up a lead or coming back again, or is it <laughs> going to be like like a shootout? shootout. Yeah, I reckon. It'll, I reckon it'll be a shootout. Uh, Don't know why. That's the first thing that came to me just then. I reckon it'll be a shootout, and then. Don't know why, but Harry Jones will put us up for. Put us up. We'll be two points ahead, and then Harry Jones will kick, kick a goal and put us up. Well, there you go, listeners. You, you know, <laughs> we we know that people people have built share portfolios and property <laughs> portfolios. Get your multis. Yeah, based on our advice. Um, no, please don't do that. I don't want to be responsible. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. You've said it. You've said it. So, if you can bet on that, that's probably thirty to one, forty to one. Well, what do you got? Here's the, here's the, have you, have you, are you going to surrender to the hope? Or are surrender you going to listen? To or are you going to listen to your head who knows better, who told me last week that our season was cooked? Bull me 3,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest? Well, this is the comment on the season. I think we'll win this week. I think we'll take the momentum from last week. I think Gold Coast, we know what their away form is like. It's horrendous. Although if anyone can, you know, fix that, it's us. Uh, and, yeah, I think we'll take that momentum in. And we, we should have beaten them up there anyway if we had have kicked, kicked okay and we generally kick well under the roof. So, yeah, I'm going for a win. Wow. And I'm saying comfortable. I said 30 at the, on the pod. I'm going to say 23. Can't believe you've been sucked in. You were adamant that we were not. The season was done. There wasn't another win coming. Yeah, but they, I, I still don't think we'll make finals. Let me ask you, you a question that you've asked me this year. Out of 10, what chance are we to make finals? Not because of us, but because of other teams. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say a six. Six? Yeah. You think it's more likely than unlikely? Only just. Wow. Because You've of other things. No. No, nah, I haven't crunched the numbers. Only just more likely by a whisker. It's a genuine 50-50, and then I just think that other results will go our way. So That's I think... Yeah, I still – I tipped a Sydney – a win against Sydney three weeks ago whenever I was on the pod, um, and I'm still going to stick with that for next week. But I definitely tipped a Brisbane Lions loss, and so I don't know what that does to us, but I'm tipping that even if those results happen, the other results 
of other teams. Yeah. It doesn't matter, though, because it, it just means we'll be playing interstate. It's true. Interstate <laughs> right team. now, it's, as well, every other Victorian team, by the way. I was just about to say, right now, there's like five interstate teams, isn't there? Yeah. Port, Sydney, GWS, Frio, and Brisbane. Five. Mm. Five out of the eight. That's a disgrace. Yeah. Victoria, yeah. we need to do better. That is a blight. I reckon it's going to be oh, God. two interstate preliminaries. Oh, <gasps> wow. The MCG might as well just host a concert or something. It's not going to get any. Lay, lay the cricket pitch. Yeah. Yeah. How big is that? Do you, you have maintained this whole time about Carlton. And I've been I've been using that as my inspiration that you've maintained that they're not going to go far in September. Well, they have the easiest run home. I think they've got the third easiest run home. Are you still maintaining that? That they'll make the eight, or that they'll crash out. That they'll go well. That they'll, well, yeah. Now that they'll make the eight, because they've kind of dropped a few that they should should have won, like we have. Yeah, they'll crash. They'll crash and burn for sure. I think they'll um, they probably will sneak in the fourth potentially. Uh, they'll oh, lose you reckon the, they'll still finish high? Okay. No, no they'll, 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 like whatever they're going to lose. They're, they're, their brand of football, which relies on um, free kicks, crips, <laughs> free kicks to Kerno. That's what and it was. Kerno free kicks. <laughs> that doesn't hold up in finals. Yeah. It's not. It's that was it. The which game was it? Was it the Port Adelaide game? Where the free kicks were so bad, you can't even fathom that. And that those that little sequence and Essen against Geelong are the two oh. worst, the two worst umpired games I've seen. Um, you, you just don't get that in finals. You don't get that in finals. Yeah, true. So. Yeah, very true. Yeah, and and now lo and behold, like Charlie Kerno is not getting the free kicks, and and he and he's getting all the blame for why Carlton are shit. Because he's not getting the free kicks and you know not kicking the fucking goals, because hmm. you've got to earn them, mate. But he's getting all the blame now. Like I just, I just think all the fans are turning on him. I'm thinking, what, what is between the ears of Carlton fans? Like, how about the other players stand up? You know, like Carlton. And this is the thing. <clears throat> no love for Collingwood at all. Hawks. Dislike them. There's there's multiple teams that I find aggravating, annoying. There's players I don't like. There's no one is quite as irritating as the Carlton Football Club, and it is the way they think. They start gassing everyone, gassing themselves up. They win a few games, and suddenly, I mean that song "Overrated Blues." Um, a decade later, still applies. They they have a win, a couple of wins. And suddenly they're talking finals. They're they're laughing at us. Yeah, you know they're talking about how they're going to have more premierships, mm-hmm. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and they crush every time. And who gives a fuck? How many days since Essendon won a final? They haven't won a flag since 1995. Yeah, I know. that's five years longer than Essendon. Yeah, we really should. Somebody should really start that Twitter account because that's the one that matters. At yeah, the end no, of the day, that's the number that's counted, not how many finals you play in and win. We all – that's exactly right. Second is, is as good as last in, in our that's competition. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that narrative that, you, you know, we're, we're a failed club because we haven't won a final, but, like we all feel it for sure. Yeah. But um, Carlton are no better, and yet they uh, continue to um, do this to themselves. I don't know why they do it, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy for it. Yeah, because I mean, it just makes the destruction all the more better, doesn't it? Correct, correct. But if all you right. had to, if if you had to have, if you had to have one of the teams outside the eight now to make it, who have you got? So outside of the eight, you've got Melbourne, Collingwood, Hawthorne, Essendon. Who have you got to make it? Maybe Hawthorne. Out of the, those four, Hawthorne, that's Hawthorne. Insane. Hawthorne beat Carlton. Uh, yeah. That's an insane prediction solution. To think that Hawthorne, out of those four, out of Melbourne and Collingwood, Coll- Collingwood not even going to make the eight. A year after that, I mean, who gives a fucking shit? I'd be dining out on the cup 
for however long, I wouldn't even care. But mm. that's insane. That's crazy. Yeah, but that, but that's that, 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 again. It gets back to my point earlier. It doesn't really matter. No. This year, you're look. If you're lucky, you'll play a Melbourne final if you finish in the bottom of the eight. So you might have a you might have a week of glory, but thereafter you're going into state and you're losing. Yeah, so okay, this is okay. Last question before we move on because I'm getting the wrap up from you. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> I know how you. I know you too well. If which interstate say we make finals, say we finish in the eight, which interstate trip do we have most hope of beating? Port Adelaide in Adelaide, Frio in Perth, or GWS in Sydney? <laughs> Who are you taking if you have to pick? Which game are we taking if we had to pick? Oh my god! Well, like fucking hell, is it like which, which um? Or, Br- or Br- sorry, or Brisbane at the Gabba? Yeah, which gulag do you want to be sent to that you might survive and not die of starvation? Uh, blood, blood loss. Yeah, I, maybe fucking hell, maybe Sydney, just because we've had so many close games there. That yeah, I don't. It's yeah, no one, no one's, no one's beating Brisbane in state. Maybe, no one's beating maybe Fremantle. We've had some famous wins in Perth. Uh, yeah, Port, Port is probably Port. Forget it. It'd be a shellacking. It's just like that doesn't bear thinking. It's going to be shit. <laughs> so, are you saying you'd prefer not to make finals? Is that what you're saying? Is that what I'm hearing from you? Nearly, nearly. Fuck. That's a big call, but yeah, you're right. We'll get we're gonna get shellacked if we have to travel any to any of those teams. But I, I agree, my call would be Freo too, only because they or if GWS make it, GWS in Sydney. Yeah, but have we ever even got near them up there? No, but they don't have any crowd. They don't have any supporters, so at least the other yeah, clubs, yeah, yeah. the crowd is going to be quite. You know, yeah, true. It's going to overbear us. Although they our do. supporters are fantastic and they do travel. Mm. GWS have no supporters. So no, they do pipe in the noise, the crowd noise when they kick a goal. That's right. It's all computerised. <gasps> so that, that would be the call. But otherwise, yeah, Frio in Perth. Look, I'm, I'm a glass. You, this might surprise you to hear this. I am a glass half full guy. And so I won't, be, I won't be overly disappointed if we lose, if we miss finals, I mean. Uh and if we do make finals, I'll be delighted for about ten minutes before you know the the sense of doom sets in. And we're, we'll all get our hopes up because we'll all be like, "Yeah, but you never know." We'll hear that you never know miracles happen, and then we'll all get our all, hopes up. All those poor bastards getting in buses and that's right. Yep, yep. You uh, know, and they're and... lining up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they've been you know and photos then... online and. Yeah. Yeah. Go to training and 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 then because I remember we did all this before the Sydney game, wasn't that our last final? Uh, I when everyone went up and the co- the coach. No, 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 the final against Sydney. No, we made it under Rutt. Was that was that under Rutt? Uh, Sydney final. I can't. I've blocked them all out. A few honest. years ago, that could have been our last one. But yeah. um, I remember, I remember exactly. We everyone was saying, but what if? You never know. You never know. And oh, the, one got... time we, the one time we played a fucking Victorian team, it was in Tassie. Oh, that was the it's last one. COVID. That yeah, was the that truck was one. one. The yeah. truck. Who did we play? Uh, bu- oh, yeah. That was the, the Bulldogs, um, dogs, dogs international yeah. diving competition. Yes. There was the dogs in. Yeah, that was the truck rotten one. Yep, you're right. Yep, 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 yep. And I remember, yep, the, the attitude was the same. You never know. I it's just crazy. remember. I do, I do know. <laughs> And this is the thing. I never know. Yes, I do. (laughs) My conscience was saying, but you do, Fiona. Don't listen. But anyway, Uh, all right. So we're both tipping a win, righto? We are. We are. Uh, Ready to help someone on the couch? Yeah. If I can't be helped, this is one that's been been here a while. So this is a bit like a bit like our friend with the ghost. Maybe the um, (laughs) the horse might have bolted. So who knows? But are you ready? Mm. Yep. My ex, who is toxic and has broken my heart multiple times, is back and sniffing around. I know I should block his number, but can't seem to, and I feel I'm about to be sucked back in. 
how do I let my head rule my heart? And again, that has been sitting there a while, so um, he or she may have made a baby since. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, yes, but even if that happens, has happened, we know that there's 500 other people in that exact same situation. Uh, because yes. is this is it's this a common story? Is, yeah. yeah, is this just not the way? Is this just not what men do? And I have been in this situation probably once. Well, that, most that, that, that seriously, before. This, is a, this is a man, though. It, didn't you just say boyfriend? No, no, my ex who is toxic. Oh, okay. Excuse me, I thought you said, I thought, but you know what? Look, I, I want to say that it's referring to a, a boy, a man. I'll say a boy because even at the age of fucking 30, they are boys and not men because that's how they act. Um, Some would argue a lot older. Uh, yeah, ex exactly. Um, so I'm just going to assume for now that you're talking about an ex-boyfriend because this is what they do. and. You know, if they haven't done the work on themselves and if they haven't matured, which we know they don't do until they hit 45, then they're going to remember, keep remembering what a good thing they've, they let go and that they fucked around and they're going to keep you on this string and they're going to take advantage of your love and your vulnerability if they get you at a point in time. And as hard as it's going to be, the correct way to, to move forward is to block their number. I have been in a situation where I've had friends tell me block the number and I've said, no, 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 I'll just mute them, you know, I won't block them, I'll just mute mm. them so I don't see, I'm not reminded of what they're doing day in and day out on socials. Well, by the way, just as an aside, what's the difference between muting and blocking? So on social media, like Twitter, Instagram, you I can I get on social media, but what yeah. about like messaging? Oh, no, 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 you can't do that with a message. Oh, okay, okay. You need to block a number, yeah, but this is yeah. on social media, so you're not reminded of them with them popping oh, up yeah. on your feed, yeah. basically. Yeah, okay. And so my friends have told me in the past, mute them, mute them, and I've been like, no, no. I mean, block them, and I've been like, no, I'll just mute them because I won't be reminded. But then that leaves that window for them to come mm -hmm. crawling back because they can still message you if you've I blocked them. Slide in a back window. That's right, as mm -hmm. they love to do. So, um, and that then, of course... A, that wasn't a euphemism, by the way. That was just, like, anyway, move on. Wasn't it? I mean, each <laughs> to their own. No judgment whatsoever. Um, and so they've, and then, and then evidently, inevitably, the guy mm. has slid back into my messages and I've fallen again because instead of cutting him off at the legs and blocking him and not giving him the opportunity to do that, because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Now, I am all for one to, to give the person the benefit of the doubt if there's been a, a break. You say, you know, you, you do your investigation. Has this person worked on themselves in that time? Have they come to their senses? Have they grown? Have they developed? Do they see the error of their ways? If you're getting the impression that, no, they're just coming back because they are either horny and bored or they've just realised what you bring to the table, then you need to cut them off of the legs because, and especially if it's somebody you're in love with, because you're not going to have... You're not going to have mm. the mind. You're not going to be in the mind frame to be able to say no to them when they're when you're sucked back in. So to avoid yourself getting into that situation, you block them as soon as they break don't, you. Don't go there. Yeah, because the, the key thing for me is broken my heart multiple times. Yes, exactly. So you, you shouldn't risk your heart getting broken a third, fourth, fifth time just because this person might have potentially improved. Yeah. Leopard, leopard spots don't that's change, right. they just get bigger or smaller. That's right. Um, yeah, that's right. That's that's multiple times tells me that you've given him the chance or her the chance to see the light, do right by you, and multiple chances says that they have not and therefore they have they have given up their chance to be with you because you deserve better. And you and someone better is out there for you who's not who's not going to take advantage of you. And I know it might feel like you're in love, but sometimes that could be trauma bonding, that could be lust, that could be chemistry. Chemistry sometimes can blind you to you know what really matters, and that's respect, um, safety, 
emotional safety. Mm -hmm. If that person is just giving you chemistry, that is not what a healthy relationship is built on. And I know it's so much easier said than done, but if you need to make that break and you need to run and block them, block the number, block the Instagram, block the Twitter. Well, no, there you go. And look, you're, you're, you're very generous with saying things about your own personal life. I don't. But I'm happy to say, look, I can, I can actually relate to this story. I have done this. Yeah. You know, okay. So your your you know, proof that it's not just men, right? No, that's right. And you know, had my heart broken multiple times, and yet somehow, again, they reach out, and sure enough, I've bought the membership again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, so, so this, is, this is Essendon's fault because it's yeah. got us into the habit of just keep going back. And so what I would say to this person is you've only got room for one toxic relationship <laughs> in your life and that's with this godforsaken football club. That's such a good point. Oh, my God. And so leave it's it. It's so true. You can't carry multiple toxic, toxic relationships. No. There is only room for one at, at best. Can I just say at best? I still yep. think this toxicity is sometimes damaging literally to health and heart but uh clearly we have no choice because we're in it for the long term and that is all you can carry the heart is fragile and there's only room for one club to break it yep and they wear red and black so yep. we need to it's, look it's, it's so much easier said than done because chemistry is a powerful thing and connection is a powerful thing but Here's the thing, I know it might feel like they're the only one, but they're not. If they are mm -hmm. if they are doing badly by you, they are not the only one and they are not the one or one of the ones. Well said, well put. All right. Well, on that note, thanks to everyone that listened. Uh, what are we around, what, 22? Yeah. Fuck. So this is the third last podcast I mean, possibly oh, oh my god you're counting down in podcasts listen to you okay you're really no, running no, well, there's, still, on, yeah. there's still potential for top four we no, there's not. On the think, pod. oh Did, what yeah you, didn't you didn't you clearly didn't listen to the pod you've let me no, down. I, no i did listen i've made several references to the pod in this pod clearly you're not listening to me and i'm sitting right in front of you well but i didn't i don't think it's mathematically did it's you say it's no, no, absolutely mathematically possible. The post-season recalibration after the finals. After which finals? So we get it. We we sneak into the eight. Yeah. And then we win two finals and we finish fourth. No, at the end of that, the year. That's that's a, that's your fake ladder. That the no. ladder the ladder the ladder has a full stop on it, and it's imprinted into the history books. Come round twenty four Sunday Look, night round twenty four. I'll put I'll put the link in the if you want to go back and listen to the great debate. I'll put the link in the podcast. That's uh, magical thinking. Description. That's um, magical. Your magical. No, no, no. It's real. But anyway, fairy, we won't go there. fairy tale ladder. So I'm sorry I mentioned it. All right. Well, on that note, thanks to everyone who listened. <laughs> Check out something about cake. Our sponsor. Go bombers, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye guys. I'm glad Go tonight, so the light from the sun would not burn me on my bum when I shoot the moon. Hill's got it. Jimmy to the ground with a pulverizing tackle from Ambrose. Oh, I think the bombers are going to go.